from the Berkeley County Commission, Eddie Gokanow, who's the liaison to Parks and Rec. Eddie, good morning to you yes, again. good morning. Uh, I thought that maybe that this would give him some content after. <laughs> yeah, there is some of that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen Smith, she is the president of the Berkeley County Parks and Rec Board. Jen, good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you coming in. Uh, obviously, Parks and Rec has uh, uh, been a discussion point in the community over the last couple of months. And... Uh, Jen, typically the Parks and Rec Board has not done public interviews before, so we do appreciate you breaking that precedent and coming in and doing this. And don't worry, you're not under attack today. So <laughs> t- take a breath. You're, <laughs> you're not the enemy. We, we're, we're good. Uh, so if you could uh, give us an update on the replacement of the Executive Director for Parks and Rec, because as I understand it, that's still an unfilled position, correct? That is correct. So... Um, Currently, right now, the applications are being accepted. They will be accepted until the 26th at 4 p.m. And you can go to our website as well as our Facebook page. Um, We are using a system called Bamboo. It's an HR um, service that we use. And um, currently, right now, we have eight applicants. And we will be conducting interviews shortly after the 26th. Okay. Uh, is, is the 26th a date because of a specific reason or delay or amount of time you have to wait, or is that just when the meeting is? That's the deadline for the applications. We're giving, um, we want it the um, applet, or we want it the ability to allow people to apply, so we gave it a month. Okay, that's fair. The applications you've gotten, have them been mostly local, or are you getting them from various regions? Um, there's a lot of local and some re- not Around. local. Okay. Uh, you are newly installed as president, correct? That is correct. When did you take over as the president? This year. Okay. So this fiscal year. And how long have you been on the board? I became a member in 2020, I believe. 2020. Okay. Yes. Uh so Steve Catlett's retirement was, what year was that, 2017, 2018? Somewhere through there, yeah. Yes. Right? It's been difficult to replace him. That's understandable because there's only one Steve Catlett. But we have gone through two directors now in about four years. Uh, can you tell me from your perspective what's been the challenge in finding the right replacement? Well, I don't think we're trying to replace a Steve Catlett. Obviously, with Steve's knowledge and him, I mean, he was doing the job for over 40 years. Um, you know, I think we just really need to focus on, um, you know, getting someone that's invested in Berkeley County and trying to move Berkeley County forward. Um, you know, I can't really talk about um, personnel issues, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, moving forward, we want to make sure that someone has the leadership experience as well as, you know, there's some project management as well, um, and, you know, a well-rounded leader. Ideally, the candidate would be able to show what in terms of your faith in hiring the next person? Looking on a resume, right? Well, What do you think? Looking on a resume, I think that, you know, obviously they need to have, um, well, Parks and Rec experience is a plus, obviously. Um, You know, leadership experience is a plus. Um, Also, you know, being able to go out into the community and being active and, 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 you know, getting the support of your community is really important as well. So making sure, you know, you have all those attributes. You said you've had how many applicants in so far? There's eight so far. And how many will you call in for an interview? Well, it depends on it depends on the resume. So I don't want to say we're going to call in five or ten. Um, I think that we will interview every candidate that we feel should receive an interview. Are some of those within the Parks and Rec Department already? No, sir. No. All right. Matt Miller. How did you first get involved with the Parks and Rec Board? So um, I have children myself. I have three kids, and I've always been, you know, an advocate for the community and being a part of the Berkeley County Development Authority. Um, I, you know, wanted to be involved. So I am a member from the school board. All so right. I'm appointed from the school board. Is that a position you kind of pursued, or something you were asked to be involved in? I did pursue it. Okay. Um, I was um, asked. There was a member that was um, 
leaving the board at that time from the school board and I was asked if I'd like to submit my application. So I, w I submitted my resume and I was interviewed by the school board and yeah. Nice. Is that a situation where with kids involved in Parks and Rec you were seeing some things that maybe you would like to see changed or at least had ideas that you wanted to be able to bring to that board? Yes, my, uh, my kids have always played basketball at um, the rec center. Like my, my oldest son is um, 20 years old and has been a part of the rec center um, since he was six years old. So, um, yes, you can always, you know, give your input on the outside, but being a part of mm -hmm. making the change is different. So I wanted to see how I could help. How many total members are there on the board? There's nine. Okay. So there's um, three appointed from each of the governing bodies. Mm -hmm. So there's three from the school board, three from the county co commission, and mm -hmm. um, three from the city. Eddie, as a liaison from the county commission, what is your role within that board? Our role is uh, basically bring information back to the commission. Okay. You know, after the meetings, I, you know, I don't have a vote, uh, okay. nor nor does my uh, my counterpart with the city, uh, Ken Collinson. Uh, but fortunately, we do have an opportunity to voice our our thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, we you know we do not have a vote, so really we're a, a, a transmission line of information. Sounds good. And as far as this process, uh, first time you have been involved in this process. In other words, when you came on three years ago, an executive director was in place. Uh, so now you're in the process of finding a new executive director. What are you kind of learning through this process? Um, I was a part of okay. the um, hire when when Bob took um, the position. All right. So this would be the second time. Okay. Things that you've learned maybe from that process to this process are still kind of the same? It's still the same. You know, we still, you know, want what's best for Berkeley mm -hmm. County, right. um, and that's the goal. Earlier you mentioned someone invested in Berkeley County. I, I wrote that down. Does that seem to give someone who is already from the area a little more of an advantage, so to speak, as to someone that may apply from outside of the area? I don't want to give anyone the advantage over the other, but I, I think, um, you know, having Berkeley County at the top of their agenda mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> it's the day after we've hired the new executive director. <laughs> what are the biggest challenges that face the incumbent in within the organization? Obviously, you've got management challenges. Managing a factory is different than managing a parks and rec center, I would guess, um, parks, parks and Rec Department. So what are, the, what are the real hot button issues, the challenges that the incumbent will face? So I don't like to talk about challenges, but I want to say, you know, goals for that. Um, you know, new person coming in is making sure that they know their staff. Um, you know, we have a How lot big of staff is there. So I'd like to say there's 16 full time staff that report directly to the incumbent. To the so there no, so there are um, there are levels. So we have a rec coordinator, um, as well as um, there's Teresa Bennett. She's the CFO, and then um, we have Tracy um, Mitsowitz as well. Um, but they all have there's a chain, right? Um, so no, they all don't report to the executive director. But um, you know, learning your staff is important, and learning um, you know learning the park. I mean, there's many there's many opportunities for them to go around and see what parks we have and what what's available, um, and bring new ideas to the table as well. And what is a step if uh, I'm I'm the incumbent and I notice that that we need new benches in a park or we need something that's going to require a capital investment? What happens then? Do who do do I go to the board? And how does that happen? So one of the things that we did start last year, um, we did start a small cap um, fund, um, and we are putting five percent revenue in that per year. Um, so anything that is forty thousand and under, the small cap fund, um, it will just have to go. Um, the finance and audit committee will review it and bring it to the board. And in terms of goals, do does the incumbent have? Uh, what are the metrics? Is it, um, I don't know how you measure efficiency or productivity in something like a Parks and Recreation Department. Is it the number of people who use the facilities or what are, what are the metrics under by which it would be judged? 
the performance would be judged? I mean, that's a good question. I think, you know, the programming is strong. Um, so, you know, getting, uh, if there's a deficiency in the programming, then obviously you would know um, something's wrong and, and to change it. But, um, you know, our programming is stronger than ever. And it's bounced back even from COVID, um, you know, with basketball being one of our strongest um, revenue generators. So, um, you know, there's many different metrics, and I think, you know, as an executive director, they can choose um, which metrics would work for them. And when I think parks and recreation, I think outdoor sports, basketball, baseball, that sort of thing. It's, but is there another element that gets into technology, um, computer stuff for for people and, and that sort of thing? Is that, so that part of the parks and rec? Parks and rec is much bigger than just programming. Um, obviously, there's, you know, nature things. There's um, many, many different things that, you know, and we we just did a survey back in 2021, I believe. And, you know, we saw some points where parks and rec was lacking because park we are a rec center. Um, so, you know, there's many different things that other rec centers around the world um, do where they have, you know, gyms and D different things like that. Um, so I think, you know, looking at what we are lacking in that survey um, and figuring out how can we support that. Um, so um, I'm not from, a, I don't know off, off the top of my head if, like, say, computers was one of those, mm -hmm. but um, um, yeah. And in the interview process, are you hoping to hear new and great ideas as you're sitting down and, and the, the, the candidate is saying, well, here's a program I would love to do? I think, you know, um, the executive committee and even the board were optimistic and we will take um, ideas and obviously it is up to the executive director, but um, we will we will take those ideas and, and vet them out and make sure if it's right for Berkeley County, then we can continue. Jen Smith is our guest, so along with Eddie Gokenauer. Jen is the president of the Parks and Rec Board. Eddie, of course, from the county commission. He is the liaison to Parks and Rec. Jen, the uh, Parks and Rec Department came under criticism this past summer for lack of communication. There were some folks who didn't feel that the ideas were getting conveyed to them well enough in regards to some of the problems with summer basketball and, of course, the Lambert Park Pool, which was an unfortunate situation throughout the summer uh, I don't believe that was throughout the fault of anybody on the Parks and Rec board or the engineering departments or whatever that has been an issue with the land there, and Steve used to talk about it all the time. Uh, however, uh, there did seem to be some complaints about the way things were being communicated. Uh, what were the problems as you see them, and what steps are you folks taking to make sure that the communication is cleaner to the public? Absolutely. So. I do feel like, yes, communication was lacking. Um, we are working with social connections with Moises, um, and he is now, you know, putting things out there as, as soon as we can. Um, we're trying to make sure, and obviously I'm here today, we're trying to make sure that we're being completely transparent with the community um, because we should. Um, we're even talking about doing town halls. I know Jim Klein did do a town hall and I attended. I think it was a very good turnout. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there that people are getting that's not accurate. So, you know, us giving correct information and factual information is important. When there's a lack of communication, I think, is when some of the conspiracy theories start to uh, really fester and, uh, and then they kind of take on a, a life of their own. And those generally happen because of a, of a lack of communication. Uh, who, who would be in charge of communications going forward? I've heard that Parks and Rec might be actually hiring a person to take on that job as public relations. Is that not true? No, that's not true. So they've contracted um, SE Studios, and um, so SE Studios is now managing their communication on their website, um, social media pages as well. So they do work very closely with the employees in the office to make sure that they're getting the information out there. And once you hire a Parks and Rec director, will that person also then kind of become the face of Parks and Rec and do a lot of these types of appearances? The executive director would. Yeah. Yes. Did I call it the executive director, by the way, or did I call it something else? 
I didn't catch it, to be honest. I wasn't huh? listening to you. I, I, I don't, <laughs> so, so just a normal interview for you then, right? 100%. Uh, when you hire a new executive director, is that person hired under a one-year contract? Is it a multi-year contract? Did I steal your question, Matt? <laughs> Great minds think alike. We were sending that back and forth. Yeah. yeah. So there is no contract. Um, so they once they are hired, they are hired. And then... Uh, how do you determine whether you want the person to continue on the job? I know we kind of covered this before under well, what the obviously metrics we, are. we do um, as a board do do um, performance reviews and things like that. But um, you know, we're, moving forward, we're hoping that you know an individual that is hired next will hmm. take the job and be there for the next forty years. Uh, somebody on our Facebook community asked, is there a, a long-term strategic plan for Parks and Rec that you've worked on? I remember Bob Williams, when he was the director, coming in and showing a, a plan for future parks and such and, and whatever. Is that the official plan? Yes, we just finished one in 2021. Uh, can you out uh, maybe lay out some of those ideas for our audience right now, some of the more uh, larger, challenging ones? I know you don't like that word, challenge. <laughs> um, I don't have the plan in front of me, but... Um, you know, part of it was the programming um, and making sure that, you know, we were touching all of the individuals that are in need of programming, as well as we were looking at Poorhouse Farm and um, adding adding some things at Poorhouse as well. Is, um, and in the meantime, we did purchase the 70 acres at Poorhouse as well. And uh, what is the future of Sportsman's Paradise? So that's a good, that has not come in conversation for a little while. And I don't believe it's called Sportsman's Paradise anymore. Well, you know, that's how we still refer to it. <laughs> right. uh, it's, just a, it's a wonderful name. Uh, it, it truly is. But uh, I can tell you that right now, uh, Sportsman is kind of on the back burner. Uh, we still have access issues of trying to be able to get a, a decent way in there. Right. Uh, so um, there's not a whole lot of activity there. We need to... Uh, uh, keep that property maintained and be a good neighbor down there but uh there's there are no plans today to be able to expand that area and otherwise are there plans for some form of public access to the river through parks and rec uh currently no no but maybe something uh in the near future that i can't really discuss yet um because of uh contract issues mm -hmm. real estate issues but we, we are we are working on it uh because i think it's really important for the, the public to be able to get on the water and enjoy the water you know if, if you don't own a river lot it's kind of tough you know unless you, you got to go to maryland to get in mostly uh or have a good friend so uh we are we are we will be working on getting a, a public access and but, i do want to mention right, yeah. that i i mentioned you know uh, and it additions to um Poorhouse Farm, and one of them was the Nature Base Playground, which um, is fully functional at the moment, and we will have an open house um, and a, like a grand opening on the 13th, Friday the 13th, which they're also showing a movie at Poorhouse Farm as well. They're going to show Hocus Pocus. So you yeah. can come out at 5 p.m. for that grand opening for the playground. So I think there's going to be some goodies as well. And financially, the, this, the status of Parks and Rec, we know during COVID it became an issue. But I understand subsequently, since you folks have bounced back, and financially, you might actually be uh, pretty flush with a healthy amount of cash. You might be looking to expand or, or whatever. Do you, you, can you relate that? Um, yes. So like I mentioned earlier, or maybe I didn't, we are um, funded. Um, the the county, the city, and the school board, both, um, they we have allocations that we receive from them as well as we receive the um, hotel motel tax from the city and the county. Um, and then, you know, we also get about 40 to 50% of our revenue also from our programming. So we are in a good spot at the moment. Um, and like I said, we've already started our um, five percent cap fund that we're going to be starting as well for different projects so you know other projects that we're putting in um, um, there's a lot of pickleballers out there I know um, so we are um, well we already have put um, lines at the War Memorial Park as well as um, we're looking into Baltimore Street as another option to put some courts there um, and also at the War Memorial, we are going to put a full basketball court as well. 
You mentioned pickleball, which tends to be more for an older audience, if you will, or a more mature audience might be the better way to say it. Is Parks and Rec looking to do some more programs for adults? I know a lot of the programs tend to be more oriented towards children. Yes, um, and that's one of the things that we're currently looking at to figure out how can we touch um, all all ages. Um, we we I think we've always done silver sneakers, um, and you know there's a lot of folks that walk in the park or at the the gyms in the morning. Um, but yes, pickleball is one that mm-hmm. is. Um, you know, I don't want to say it's for older because I know there's some younger individuals right. that play too. So. Are there still uh, adult volleyball leagues? I know in the past there have been volleyball and some other adult leagues as well. Are those still available? The adult volleyball leagues, I will have to check on that. I don't. Right. I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's kind of is part of that facilities that that the, because of the programs that you offer um, and and the, the kids that are involved in those programs, there's just not enough space to to maybe still be able to do some of the adult programs. Well, and that's why. W- during the summer, I guess we did have a lot. So basketball, I, I don't think was ever um, during the I think springtime or summer at um, offered. So what we decided to do was alternate the basketball um, from the Randy Smith Center to make sure that everyone had the opportunity. Um, and speaking of volleyball, so we offered volleyball in place of basketball just just in case, you know, kids wanted to play volleyball mm-hmm. instead of basketball um, during that season. Final question for Jen Smith. My, my last question, I, I've talked to Chris Palmer off uh, the air, and uh, I've had great conversations with Chris about Parks and Rec and, and Berkeley County and such, but Chris is pretty adamant about not doing public interviews. Why did you agree to do this one, Jen? I feel like we need to be transparent, and if we are not transparent in getting correct information out there, like you said, it could, um, you know, false information can just snowball, and I I want to make sure that we as a board and a a park system, um, we are here for Berkeley County, and like I said, all of the board members are active in the community. All of the executive committee members do have children of their own that participate. Um, and you know we're all volunteer board members that just want what's best for Berkeley County. Um, all of our meetings are the third Tuesday at 11:30 at the Berkeley 2000. It is open to the public, where you can come and community members can express um, their opinions there. Um, there's an option for a public um, public comment, and I encourage individuals to do that because if we don't know what the community needs or what they're what they're mad about Mm -hmm. um, then we don't know will you ever consider doing an evening meeting so that has been discussed um, on several occasions Um, I'm not opposed to it Um, I just think that it has to be a consensus with the entire board Jen Smith thank you so much appreciate you coming in thank you Eddie any final thoughts no have a great day it's a beautiful day go enjoy it Go to the park. <laughs> Good suggestion. Eddie Gokenauer and Jen Smith at uh, 932.